Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome to Dee's Yard. So today I wanna to share with you this elevated garden bed that my husband and I built together for growing some veggies. Now we chose to elevate our vegetable garden for a few reasons, but the two main reasons were rabbits and critters. We get a tons of them and I didn't wanna deal with netting or fencing of any sort. The other main reason was thinking long-term and how my back and joints will thank me in the future for going elevated. Now for the lumber supplies for this project, I'm using a total of 13 one by six by eight cedar boards. This will be used for the main garden box and I'm using cedar for anything that will come in contact with the soil. Cedar is naturally resistant to rot, decay, and insect attacks. I'm also using a total of five one by six by eight pressure treated boards for the legs and railings of the garden box. I'm using pressure treated in place of cedar for the legs to cut down on the cost. I'm also using a standard eight foot two by four for the bottom box support. So once I got all my lumber supplies, the first step was to cut down all the boards into the appropriate sizes needed. I'm using a sliding square tool throughout this project to help even up all my cuts and assist in measurements. First, I square off the edges of my long side of the garden box and ensure that all six cedar boards are the same length. Then I moved on to the short side of the garden box. I squared off one of the edges and measured them to 30 inches each and cut six of them all to length. I will have all the measurements including the overall dimensions listed at the end of this video. Next, I worked on the remaining five cedar boards that will be used for the bottom of the garden box. These five boards create 15 slats that hold up the soil. Again, square off one end, then measure the length and cut it to its size, which was about 28 and a half inches each. Then I moved on to the pressure treated wood. Two boards are cut evenly into six legs at 32 inches each. The other four legs are also cut at 32 inches each, but need to be a little thinner, so they are then ripped by one inch. The railings, which are optional, and the two by four being ripped in half are not shown here, as I needed some help with that. Next up, I pre-drilled a bunch of evenly spaced pocket holes into the long side boards of the garden box. Pocket holes are a very strong, easy, and great way to disguise screws. This creates a cleaner and neater appearance. You'll see I always clamp the pocket hole jig onto my workpiece prior to drilling the angled holes to keep the jig in place. Then I drive an inch and a half screws in each pocket hole to make each side three boards in height. I use an inch and a half screws for this entire project. Next, I take the ripped in half two by four and attach to the bottom to each long side of the garden box. This will be used to support the bottom slats for support. I measure to make somewhat even holes, then I pre-drill all the holes. Next, I drill pilot holes. Pilot holes guarantee that your screw won't break off and your wood won't crack. It relieves the stress on the wood and we do not want to crack our cedar. Lastly, I drive the screws in. Next, I attach the short sides of the garden box the exact same way as I did for the long sides. First, I measure out where I want the holes. Then, I pre-drill the pocket holes using a clamp. I always use a sliding square tool to make sure the boards are lined up even, and then I drive in the screws. And then I repeat with the next board so each side has three. Next, it's time to work on the legs for the garden box. First, we painted each of the legs using some leftover exterior paint from our fence. This step is completely optional. Now, I start to assemble the four corner legs. All of the legs were cut to 32 inches, with four then being ripped by one inch to be even on each side of the garden bed corner. To create a corner leg, I first measure three holes. I use a jig and a clamp to pre-drill three pocket holes. Then, I square up the two boards to form a 90 degree corner leg and then drive the three screws in. Next step, attach the sides. I begin final assembly of the garden box by lining up the two long sides with the short ends. Then I drill six pilot holes on each side and then I drive in the screws. You'll notice that I screwed in the top and bottom on each side first to help stabilize the boards while I drill. Next, to assemble the legs on each corner, I suck the leg into the corner and use a clamp to hold it in place. I then pre-drill six holes on each side, followed by drilling pilot holes, and finally driving the screws. 
The next step is completely optional, and if you choose not to have railings, you can eliminate a whole board from your supplies. Here you will see we had a slight design flaw and need to use some of the scrap wood cut earlier to get the correct length for the railings. But hey, what's a backyard DIY without some type of flaw? Especially considering we are no way carpenters. The railings also have a 45 degree miter cut on each end. They are installed with screws and painted. Again, this is completely optional. Next step, attach the center support legs. The center legs on both sides of the garden bed are pre-drilled from the inside of the garden bed to hide the holes and screws. Then I drill pilot holes and finish off with screws. Next step, I assembled all 15 slats to create a bottom of my garden bed. These slats were cut around 28 and a half inches to fit between the long section of the bed. I evenly spaced the slats apart so the bottom has proper drainage. Then the bottom slats are drilled in place. You may also notice that on the side of the bed, we use some extra scrap wood as support so the middle doesn't bow out once it's filled with heavy soil. Last steps are adding a layer or two of landscape fabric to line the bottom of the garden bed. I like to use landscape fabric because it will hold in all the soil, but is also porous to let the water drain out. I then use a staple gun to ensure the barrier stays put while I fill the garden bed with soil. I'm also dealing with an uneven surface, so I added six pavers under each leg to level it out. So here I will list the quick plans that I came up with for this garden bed. And again, I am no carpenter. And I also wanted to mention that we had a few supplies on hand already, including the paint, but I paid around $300 for the supplies to build this very large elevated garden bed, which will last for a very long time. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you did like it as well as subscribe. I'm new here to YouTube. I make garden related videos. And the next video I'm gonna be doing is what I fill this garden bed with. Bye guys.